Hey everyone, my name is Jimmy Pemberton. Welcome to video numero dos of how to prepare for the studio. If you have not caught video one yet, please run over to Vader's YouTube channel and check it out there. And then come on back, we'll be here waiting for you. What we're gonna talk about today is what to do a few days or day prior to going into the studio for your recording session. When it comes to charting, I know a lot of you guys are probably going, oh, I can't write music. I don't know how to, how to do that. Doesn't matter. Anything as simple as the song structure will do fine. So if you can write out, you know, the song starts on a chorus, then goes to a verse, then chorus, then bridge, then chorus, whatever the case may be, that will be absolutely perfect. Now, if you want to take it a step further and talk with your teacher or seek out a teacher to get some more tips on how to properly chart a song, I think that's great, but it's just not 100% necessary. All you need to do is be able to give yourself some sort of a foundation so when you go into the studio, you're a little bit more prepared and have a reference. That way when a producer or engineer or whoever says, oh, you know what would be great for this song? If you just made that bridge half as long or that last chorus twice as long, so you can put a little note to yourself, you know, like, oh, you know, you have that last chorus written, boom, now do it twice as long. That way, right before the take, you kind of look down, you're reassured, you're like, oh yeah, last chorus, twice as long, boom. Or if you do have it fully charted using notation, it's great too, you can be like, oh yeah, there's that measure there is where I'm doing the fill, whatever. So either way, bottom line, have a chart, have some notes, have something with you for every song you're going to record. You'll be so glad you did. The next thing you're going to want to do is give either the producer, the engineer, or just the studio in general a nice little phone call, a little hey, how are you, before you go in there. Um, you might be wondering, am I using my drum set? Are you bringing your kit to the studio, or do they have a house kit? Oftentimes, a lot of these studios do have a kit that they use quite often, tuned up, ready to go, and they're comfortable with it. And sometimes that's the better choice. But maybe you're like, I want to use my kit. Or maybe you're going to call them and be like, oh, what do you have for kit? And they'll be like, oh, we got this great five-piece kit, blah, blah, blah. And at home, you're rocking two kick drums and 36 toms. So clearly, you need your two kick drums and 36 toms to go with you. So that's why this, this call before is so important. A couple other things that you're definitely going to want to check on is other gear. Like maybe you'll be like, oh... What do you guys have for symbols? And they're like, oh, we got tons of symbols. They're lying. Just kidding. Maybe they're not, but I've definitely had the experience numerous times where they're like, oh, yeah, we got all this and this. I get there. They do not. Let's say you, you have symbols that you're not totally jazzed on. Don't be afraid to hit up a buddy, a friend's dad, throw something up online, you know. Get yourself those symbols. You can probably rent them from someone. Go to your local drum shop. Um, there's ways of getting nice cymbals and just that little bit of effort to seek them out is going to make your recording that much better and you're just going to be psyched to play them anyway. So let's say you're, you're going to use their house kit, okay? And may maybe you want to pack some of the extra stuff like, oh, I'll bring my snare drum or maybe you'll just put the whole kit in your car just for kicks, just in case you need it. Um, you're definitely going to want to bring some of the comfort items such as I always recommend bringing your foot pedal I'm partial to bringing my own throne just because I'm comfortable with it. I keep it at the same height so when I get to different studios, I can set the drums up based on where I sit all the time. But either way, you're going to want to make sure that you have all that stuff covered. Symbols, the whole deal. Always double check with them, but then be over prepared on your side. That's going to be the general rule when talking about getting to the studio. Over prepared. Say it with me. Over. Very good. Prepared. One more time. Over. Prepared. Excellent job. You're right with me. I know this is kind of like Barney, but way cooler. So moving forward, some of the other things that you're going to want to check on until I put on my purple suit. Talk drum heads. You're either going to want to put some new heads on your drums, or maybe you're going to bring some for the, for the studio kit there, or maybe you got some old heads on your drums and they already sound great. Either way, you're going to want to check on that. That's going to bring me over to, to my next point here. The checklist. Now I know what you're thinking. Checklist? This guy is OCD. Well, maybe he does. Maybe he does just a little. You're going to break out the pen and paper or maybe the phone, wherever you want to keep your list. You're going to start making your checklist of everything that you're going to need at the recording studio. Now, if you're taking your drums, 
that's gonna be numero uno, and I strongly suggest listing each drum individually. That way you don't get halfway down the street and it's like, oh man, do I have my second floor tom? Oh man, I don't have my second floor tom. You know? So, once you got it on the list, boom, and it's, it's in the car, hopefully the night before because you're being super prepared, check, good to go. So, next thing that I recommend putting on the list, drumsticks. Now, just to give you a little, little story, um, when I was a little younger, I worked at a drum shop. Uh, a little shout out to Desenzo's Drum Shop in Weymouth, Massachusetts. And when I'd be there, guys would come in sweating. And they'd be like, oh man, I'm late to the studio, do you have sticks? And because they realize they didn't prepare and they forgot sticks. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this. So, boom, right on that checklist, sticks. Now, just some recommendations as far as sticks. Get yourself obviously what you're comfortable with, but maybe you want to try a few different pairs. Maybe you're playing something lighter and you want to have a pair of Vader 7As with you. Or maybe, like myself, you want to rock a little bit. Get yourself a little uh, Vader 5B wood tip, you know? Another great thing to have with you is just some other different kinds of sticks for some different sounds. You know, when the producer wants to get a little weird and you're like, you know what, I'm into getting weird, let's do this. You know, the monster brush. Look at that, makes awesome sounds just in the air. So yeah, you know, pick up something like this, have something, something cool. The key really with all this is just variety. So when someone's looking for a different sound or you want to change it up, that you have that. Um, just your standard brush is perfect too. So case in point, you want some, uh, some different stick options and on your checklist so you know what you have pretty much the night before or days before, you know, drumsticks. Check! Next on the list, you're gonna have a drum key. You're gonna wanna make sure you have one of these on you at all times, just being a drummer in general. It's constantly that situation where you're like, oh man, oh man, and then, you know, throw it on the keychain or keep it in, you know, the little pocket on your jeans, whatever the, whatever the case is, have one with you at all times. This way when the producer or engineer is like, hey man, can you uh, tune up that, that rack, Tom? You're like, yeah, got it. You're not like, yeah, where's the drum key? You already have it. So it's better just to be prepared in general. Let's see what we got so far. We got our drum kit. We got sticks. We got drum key. So this last one's the big one. Doesn't have anything to do with drums, but yet it has everything to do with your performance. Snacks, man, snacks. Sometimes these studio sessions, especially if this is gonna be your first time, you're, you're sitting in there for a while. So you're getting sounds, you know, you're, you're making sure that you got it all together. You wanna make sure that you have some snacks with you for when you get hungry. Uh, keep it light, you know, you don't want Wendy's cheeseburger from yesterday, you know? That's cool when you're getting a little weird at like 2 a.m., that's totally fine. But in the studio, get yourself some trail mix, granola bars, maybe an apple and orange, you know, keep it health conscious and, and healthy. Along with that, bottled water. Um, huge, Have bring a case with you, bring, bring extra, you know? Because chances are, you know how bass players are, they're not bringing water, so you're gonna be hooking them up too, but anyway, bring some extra water for yourself. Yep, and so now that you've gone over your list, check, 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 check! Yeah, pretty good. Maybe I'll stop drumming, start my singing career, you know? Anyway, um, you got your checklist, you're good to go. Now we're gonna go over something that completely changed things for me. Practicing relaxing is something that has helped me immensely as far as preparing for the studio. It's also helped me as far as preparing for live gigs and just life in general. Now this is something that was taught to me from my good friend and teacher, Dave Desenzo. If you're unfamiliar with Dave, Definitely look him up, uh, he is the absolute man. So we're gonna start here, we're gonna have you get out your drum throne. Uh, I want you to get real comfortable with doing this exercise on the seat that you perform and practice on on a, on a pretty consistent basis. So you're on your drum throne, we're gonna sit, we're gonna leave our sticks alone for a minute, we're gonna get our arms by our side, get loose, and the first thing we're gonna focus on is our breathing, now that is it. So you are just focusing on your breathing. Period. So we got our hands by our side. Taking some breath. It doesn't matter now if they're deep or shallow. Just the fact is getting some consistent breath happening. Just really focusing on it. Now I'll do this normally somewhere between 
two and five minutes, just the breathing, and maybe even more depending. So I'll just give you a few examples of, of what it looks like. All right, so now once you start getting comfortable with that, we're gonna do something that we call body scans. Now that's a term that I also get from Dave. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look inside for a second. We're gonna start at our head and go all the way down to our toes. And we just kind of take a look at every body area and just make sure that it's relaxed. Uh, a lot of times I find even with myself, I may have been doing the breathing for a minute, and then when I start doing the body scan, I'll get down to my, my hands or my wrists, and I'll notice that I'll have like a, a fist clenched. Not necessarily pretty tight, but I'll have a fist clenched, and it will remind me just to let it go and relax, you know, and this goes with all the parts of the body. So I'm gonna do a, a quick example of a body scan, and you might see me adjust my posture a little bit, and that's just because as I hit different areas, I kind of can feel where I need to adjust to get things relaxed. So this is kind of what that looks like. All right, cool. So now I've gone over some breathing and a body scan. Now it's time to, to pick up my sticks here. And we wanna apply the practicing relaxing to a playing situation. So we're just gonna do a simple exercise of single strokes going into double strokes. Now for those that don't know what that is, I'm just gonna go right, left, right, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. I'm gonna keep that going as I first, again, focus on the breathing and then go in and start doing a body scan. So I'm just gonna give you a, a brief example of that at a pretty slow speed, keep it all relaxed. All right. Now I'm gonna start my body scan. Awesome. Now I'm gonna take that same exercise and do it at a faster tempo. Again, the goal here is really just to focus on the breathing and do a body scan as well. It's not so much on the exercise I'm doing on the pad. It's really about staying relaxed while just performing something at a faster tempo. Here we go. So you may have noticed I was even making some slight adjustments there. You'll do the same and you'll keep doing it. Once you get comfortable doing it, sort of on the pad and even before the pad, take it to the kit, have some fun with it. But what I'd really like you to do is every five minutes before you really play or before you practice with your band, before anything playing, do this. If you make this consistent, your playing will become more consistent. I can say that it did it for me even in areas, just life in general, areas beyond drumming. If you learn to be relaxed, you'll be more relaxed. If you're more relaxed, you're gonna play better, period. All right guys, that wraps up video number two on preparing for the recording studio. In our next video, we'll actually be taking you to the studio itself. Again, my name is Jimmy Pemberton. You can get in touch with me at jimmypemberton.com or you can also friend me on Facebook. All right, look forward to hearing from you.